Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're doing a little bit of a different one, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, today we're gonna be taking a look at what is inside of a used fuel filter. Now, this fuel filter has been sitting actually like this for like two weeks and uh, it's completely empty. There's no gasoline, there's no danger of fire. I will have a fire extinguisher right there, handy, in case there is an issue. Um, don't try this at home. This is not a try at home video. This is a watch me do it so you don't have to video. Uh, the story of this fuel filter is it came out of my uh, Ford F-150 of about 133,000 miles. And uh, this is definitely the original fuel filter. And I also have a new one to compare it to. Now the reason I have this new one is because the barb size on this new one is much larger than the old one. Maybe you guys can see that. See how this one's bigger than this one? So I ordered this one a while ago and uh, I couldn't return it. So I'm just kind of stuck with it. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm okay cutting this one open because I can't use it anyway. And they're pretty inexpensive. And I want to see, I want to compare 130,000 mile uh, fuel filter to a brand new one. So with all of that out of the way, let's head over to the bandsaw. And again, before we get started, I want to put all your guys' worry at ease. I have a BC fire extinguisher here specifically for oil, grease, and gasoline. So, I'm prepared. Again, don't try this at home. So, we're here at my bandsaw. Here's our old fuel filter here. Uh, I'm going to put it in the bandsaw. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. Make sure the cut is where I want it to be. So this is where I want the cut. I just want to cut this top ream off with the bandsaw. So uh, let's let it rip. I use this piece of aluminum to kind of vise it in place. Maybe I should use two for the next one. Before we look inside it though, let's go ahead and grab our new fuel filter and cut the top off of that. Here's our new fuel filter. Now let's uh, let's cut this thing open. There we go. That's the new filter. Now let's take them over to the workbench. All right. So this is the big moment. What the filter material looks like after 130,000 miles. And it is not bad. I mean, this this stuff's from us cutting with a bandsaw. Don't mind that. But yeah, it doesn't look too bad. And this this burnt part is also because we cut it with a bandsaw. If we spread open the fins, you can kind of see some yellowing. I mean, it's obviously used. And this is what the top looks like because we cut the filter material kind of in the center. So it just looks like. The exact same thing as those old plastic filters you see on carbureted cars, um, those really cool see-through ones. And I imagine these are made either a manufacturing stents because it's easier just to stick a barb fitting over here and it just pushes in and you're done. So it's manufacturing uh, very, very easy and I'm pretty sure for fuel injection you need higher PSI on the fuel rail. So you need something that can take those pressures. But it does, it looks exactly like a, like an old school filter. But I thought, what I found was a little interesting. So, this is coming from the fuel pump, right? So it's going, the fuel is going this direction. So this goes in here like this. But there's no, there's no hole in the bottom of this uh, filter material. So the way that works is gas floods into this chamber passes through this filter material and then exits through this hole here. So a little interesting there. That's pretty cool. That's exactly how a fuel filter works. Now we can compare the filter material to a new one. So it was a little harder to get um, this filter material out of the new one. I crushed it a bit with the vise on the uh, bandsaw, so I'm pretty sure that's where that came from. So my main concern is looking at the new one versus the old one and how different it really is. It doesn't appear to be different, so I'm going to rip some of this from filter material off. I'll say that the, if you look at the bands, they're a bit thicker. 
Isn't that interesting? I wonder why. Because this is a replacement unit? Who knows? So we can compare directly the material here. And it looks more or less the same. It's kind of funny. However, I will note that when I put the new filter in the truck, very similar to this one, um, the engine revved pretty high at idle to about 3000 and then the computer dialed it back down to idle. So what, why that happens is because this fuel filter is you know, clogged. It's more clogged than a new one. So the fuel pump is told to work really, really hard, you know, like this, to work really, really hard to send gas through this and it gets to the engine and it works and it idles fine. And over time, the engine just kind of, or the computer management just kind of steps up the fuel pressure, right? So it idles. Uh, but when I put the new filter in the truck, very similar to this one, uh, there's not any particulates in the way, so the filter is able to flow more freely. So it sends the amount of gas it thinks it has to, and when it revs all the way up to 3,000 and then steps down, that's the computer going, wow, that's, that's a lot of gas. We don't need that much to idle, so it tells it to back off. And um, that's basically how installing a new fuel filter is not only going to help your engine run better, uh, it's going to preserve the life of your fuel pump. So it's very important to change these. So, that is what's inside of a fuel filter, a used fuel filter, and a new one. So that is super cool. We got to do that kind of a comparison. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Not exactly the kind of videos I normally do, but if you liked them, let me know and I can cut more things automotive related open, which will be super fun. So, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and ring that notification bell. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.